at the Western Australian Art Gallery for the Continental Shift Exhibition, which is a joint venture with the Terra Foundation of Chicago, the Western Australian Art Gallery and the University of Western Australia. I, I introduced the idea of this exhibition with Peter Brownlee from Chicago. Uh, and we're very fortunate that the Art Gallery of Western Australia uh, took up the idea so that we could show its collection next to the, next to the um, Terra Foundation's collection. And it's the first time in Australia that the Terra Foundation has mounted an exhibition with a, a purpose-built um, teaching unit. They are funding the arrival of uh, three expert uh, lecturers from America to, uh, to give their view of the, of the show, uh, really distinguished thinkers and speakers about 19th century landscape. And then at the symposium, we're having a number of Australian experts from, from Melbourne and Sydney and uh, Canberra coming over. So there'll be a, a real mixing of, um, uh, of experts on Germany, Britain, America and Australia. So it'll be a real cross-cultural cross event. The Terra Foundation evolved out of the collection of a single businessman, Daniel J. Terra who started collecting around the bicentennial year, 1976, the 200th year of our independence from Britain. He began building his collection uh, buying paintings uh, of the 19th and early 20th century, and over time started to uh, build a collection that could tell the story of American art and its development over that period. So I think he built a collection that was relatively comprehensive for its size, and was always intended to be able to uh, convey that narrative of the development of American art and cultural history from the late colonial period uh, to uh, the early 20th century. Well, I think having the Terra Foundation working in collaboration with the Art Gallery and the University of WA is a very positive thing and uh, there is a very strong connection between Australia, including Western Australia and the United States, of course, and having this uh, cultural artistic connection really deepens that relationship and I think that's a very positive thing. The works from the gallery's collection I was very keen to find works that I thought had good connections with the works from the Terra Foundation. Uh, for me it was quite interesting because some of the Australian works are made a little bit later than the American works so it was interesting to look at the, perhaps a little bit of a time lag but really was trying to find works that had similar approaches to the landscape. Some artists who also had a similar training background, so Von Gerard for example who trained in Germany like one of the, the American painters. So trying to find those kind of connections in, in the work so that audiences could actually enjoy that as well. I really hope that the audiences are engaged by the similarities and differences in the, the landscape paintings that were made on the two continents. I hope they actually just have a real joy of actually looking at paintings up close and thinking about what, what they're looking at. Back in the day of, of around settlement, Aboriginal people, and by that time, Aboriginal people probably wouldn't have wanted to be around um, most settlers and stuff like that because of the way that um, Australia pretty much started out. You know, very hard. The, the cultures didn't mix. The laws didn't uh, coincide. The people didn't understand each other in the way that, you know, each other's law was about how to live in that country. I can understand uh, there's no representation of our people. Uh, because they wouldn't have been around. And there's one particular one that I did see uh, from an American artist, and it was called The Last of the Mohicans. And that was quite sad. Uh, the title, Last of the Mohicans, and then you see a man standing over another man. Uh, darkness, the, the, the landscape is painted in darkness when the land is very colourful. And what do you hope people will take away from the evening when they go home? Well, that they have spent a nice couple of hours in, uh, uh, in the gallery and uh, they feel like this is a good place to visit on a regular basis. Uh, I'm sure that most of our supporters come to the gallery several times a year. But it's, a, it's a, again, uh, about the feeling that this is home and they can come anytime, not only when they are invited for an evening. All 30,000, 40,000 people will see the exhibition. Yeah. So having seen the exhibition myself, I would highly recommend that you come and have a look at it. It starts July 30th and runs until February next year. Bianca Wood, Undercurrent.